last two classes we have seen contest free languages represented using contest free grammars last class we have seen how we can use the principle of mathematical induction for proving the correctness of a grammar design and today we are going to discuss about leftmost derivations past trees and ambiguity and before uh, we see what is ambiguity in uh, grammar let us try to understand what is a leftmost derivation we can try to understand a leftmost derivation with an example here an example contest free grammar is given with the five productions we can look at an example derivation we know that uh, the derivation should start with the start simple of the grammar suppose i apply production number 1 from the start simple so what i am getting is the rhs of the production number 1 because s is going to be replaced with the rhs of the production number 1 so this is what i am getting now suppose i apply production number 3 on this s then what i am getting is the leftmost s in this sentential form is going to be replaced with the rhs of the production number 3 so this capital s is replaced with small a and that is this step now i am going to apply a production for this capital s that is the only one in this sentential form i am going to apply production number 2 so 2 is uh, this production so capital s is going to be replaced with a star s now for the leftmost uh, non terminal here apply production number 4 so what will i get this capital s will be replaced by small b that is what production 4 is say and finally to obtain a sentence or a string of terminals we need to apply a production for capital s and now suppose you apply production number 5 so you will get this string derived the string is a plus b star c and this grammar is in fact a part of the contest free grammar which is there for the definition of any high level programming language like the c programming language of course there are rules for uh, other operators that is uh, minus and uh, slash that is a division but uh this is how you can do it using a contest free grammar and this is a derivation which shows how can you derive the expression a plus b star c from the start simple using a sequence of five steps and if you recall how you replace the non terminals initially you had only one non terminal so you applied a production for that so this capital s is replaced by the rhs of this product and now if you look at this string which is a uh, sentential form because sentential form means any string derived from the start simple now there are two non terminals both are capital s so you can apply a production for the first s or the second s but in this case what i did is if there are more than one non terminals in the current string i opted to select the leftmost non terminal for replacement and that's what i did so in this case this capital s is replaced with small a because production number 3 is applied and now i have only one so no doubt i have to uh, rewrite this string by using a production for capital s this time i am applying production number 2 so this s is replaced with a star s the rhs of production number 2 and here i have a choice because two occurrences are there for capital s so which one to replace 
So here again I decided to replace the leftmost S. So I did it using production number 4. So B is replacing capital S. And here I don't have any choice for S, only one. Now I am applying production number 5. So this capital S is going to be replaced with small c. That's what I did. And this type of a derivation where the leftmost non-terminal is replaced at every step is called a leftmost derivation. So definition is simple. It's a derivation where always the leftmost non-terminal is selected for replacement by applying one or more uh, by applying a production for the selected non-terminal. Now I think uh, what is leftmost derivation is clear to you. It's a simple concept and now I am going to introduce what is called a pass free. The same grammar and uh, you can look at the same derivation again. You start with the start symbol of the grammar and you can represent a derivation like this using a tree and we are going to see what that tree is. So you are starting with the start symbol and the start symbol can be represented using the root node of the tree which is known as a derivation tree. So here what we applied, if you recall, we applied price number 1 and we got uh, this sentential form and how will you represent this step in the tree is like this. So what I did is I replaced capital S with S plus S and this is how you can represent it in the tree. This was the non-terminal represented by the root node to begin with and the root node, from the root node you apply the production S plus S, is the RHS of capital S. So you can represent it by adding three child nodes to the node representing the LHS of the production, LHS of the production. And the RHS is represented by that many number of nodes whose uh, data or label is the symbols in the RHS. So capital S plus capital S. And now if you recall in the derivation what we did was we applied production number 3 for this S. And how will you represent it here? So in this time you can see that this is the node that we selected for expansion. That is the leftmost leaf node with a non-terminal. So this time we are replacing it with small a. So this is how you can represent it. This is expanded by applying this production. So only one child because in the RHS only one simple. And next uh, step was this capital S that is this not is expanded with S star S. Now it's clear what will happen. And sorry for the typo this should be star. Okay, this should be star. So S star S. And uh, after that the production applied is this, S is replaced with V and this is the leftmost leaf node with a non-terminal label. So this S is going to be replaced with small b, that's what is happened. Because production is number 4 where the RHS is only small b and that is a single child node is coming here. And now only one non-terminal is there in the current string and that is going to be replaced by applying production number 5. So capital S which is represented by the only leaf node with a non-terminal level and that is going to be replaced or expanded with the RHS which is just one simple which is a terminal simple which is small c. So this is how you can represent it. So the Tree representation of a derivation is more clear than writing it like this and this is what is called a parse tree and uh, you can actually see that the leftmost derivation and parse trees represent each other. If you are given with a leftmost derivation, 
you can construct a pass tree or if you are given with a pass tree you can reconstruct the sequence of steps in the derivation also because from here you know that you applied a production for capital S and what was the production? The production whose RHS is capital S plus capital S. So you can uniquely reproduce the sequence of steps in the derivation if you are given with the pass tree or the derivation tree. So you can say that the leftmost derivations and pass trees represent each other. Moving on to the next slide. Here I am asking you a question. Is the leftmost derivation unique for the expression a plus b star c? We have seen one leftmost derivation for a plus b star c. My question is, is that the only possible leftmost derivation? Of course, more other derivations are possible if you are selecting some other simples may, may not be the leftmost simple then of course there are more derivations possible but here the question is suppose you are asked to select the leftmost non-terminal for applying a production during the derivation then is it possible for you to get more than one such derivations for the string a plus b star c and here is the first one that we have seen. This is how you derived uh, a plus b star c using leftmost derivation. Here we replace this cap leftmost capital S. Here only one that is replaced. Here again the leftmost s is replaced. And finally this. So this is a leftmost derivation. And uh, if you look at this grammar, you can see that there is one more possible leftmost derivation and which is given here. So what I apply, initially I apply production number 2. So I am getting a star s. Then the leftmost derivation means I have to replace the leftmost s. And now I am applying production number 1. This is exactly what I am getting. This capital S is replaced with capital S plus s. Then I am applying production number 3 for the leftmost s. I am getting a. Then here leftmost is this s, I am applying production number 4, getting small b and finally here I am applying production number 5 and I am getting the same string. So these two are two different uh, leftmost derivations for the same input string. So the answer to the question is no, it is not unique because we found at least two derivations, both are leftmost and hence the leftmost derivation is not unique and this type of a string which is derived from the start simple. When I say string, I mean a string of uh, terminals like this and that is why I said sentence. This type of a sentence for which there exists more than one leftmost derivation is called an ambiguous sentence because here there is an ambiguity in applying the production c from the first step i can apply either production number one or two in both case i can derive the input string so there is an ambiguity there is uh, the sequence of steps in the derivation is not uniquely defined. This may be creating a problem when you want to write an algorithm to derive a string. If uh, every step is uh, deterministically decided or at every possible step in the derivation, suppose the next step is uniquely defined then the derivation or automating the derivation may be easy. But if it is not uniquely defined, it may not be that easy. So if a sentence is ambiguous, that means the production's sequence of steps are not uniquely defined. There may be more than one sequences. 
giving the or deriving the same input stream and that kind of a sentence for which there exists more than one leftmost derivation is called an ambiguous sentence and a context free grammar is said to be ambiguous if it derives an ambiguous sentence so when a context free grammar is called an ambiguous grammar when that grammar gives two or more leftmost derivations for at least one stream then it is called amb ambiguous that is if there exists an ambiguous sentence derived from the grammar the grammar is said to be ambiguous and when a sentence is said to be ambiguous when there exists more than one leftmost derivations for the sentence i hope uh, the definition of ambiguity is now clear ambiguity is in in the selection of the production in the derivation process for example here is not uniquely defined we can apply either production number 1 or production number 2 both will give you a chance to derive the required sentence a plus b star c and a sentence is uh, not ambiguous if there exists only one leftmost derivation and with this i'm moving to the next slide where i'm trying to tell you that uh, or give you one more example for witnessing the fact that uh, leftmost derivation and past three represent each other and we have seen this leftmost derivation for a plus b star c and here is the past three a sorry for this typing mistake this should be plus a plus b star c and here is the other derivation leftmost derivation that we have seen and the corresponding past three is here this is a plus b star c sorry for this typing mistake it should be plus so here you can see that uh, the past three is look different so here initially i apply yes plus yes and uh, then if you look at the tree hanging at this knot only small e so that part is finished here but in in this case is like a mirror image of this tree that's what it happened so here this leftmost derivation is represented by this past tree and uh, this past tree is representing this leftmost derivation so given the past tree you can construct the leftmost derivation or vice versa in this case as well so you can say that a grammar is called ambiguous if there exists more than one derivation trees for a sentence or more than one past trees for a sentence because if there are more than one past trees then you can construct more than one leftmost derivation because each past tree will give you a unique leftmost derivation so we can say that uh, grammar cft is ambiguous if there exists more than one past trees or derivation trees and with this uh, we are moving on to the last slide where i'm giving you a practice question for you to understand uh, what we did today so the question is uh, give an ambiguous context free grammar any grammar and ask you that the given grammar is ambiguous you try to look at all the example grammars that we discussed in our class and see which one is ambiguous don't and try to give a grammar where you replace plus with minus or star with slash that will be very easy please don't do it you try to look at all the uh, example context free grammars that we discussed in this class and try to identify uh, which one is ambiguous that's enough
uh, you uh, think about some sentences for which uh, you can find uh, more than one leftmost derivation if you find then that's enough to conclude that uh, the grammar is ambiguous so today we have seen when a grammar is said to be ambiguous the grammar is said to be ambiguous if it provides more than one leftmost derivations for at least one sentence and uh, we saw that leftmost derivations and past trees represent each other given a leftmost derivation you can automatically construct a past tree or given a past tree you can automatically obtain the sequence of steps in the corresponding leftmost derivations and the leftmost derivation is a derivation where always the leftmost non terminal in the sentential form is replaced with a production for the non terminal which is selected thank you